Hello and welcome to Worship for Sunday, June 28th, 2020. However you found us, uh, whenever you have found us, we are glad that you have joined us for this virtual time of worship and celebration of our risen Lord. As we gather and prepare our hearts and minds for the worship and praise of God, just a few brief announcements. I do want to remind everyone that next Sunday, which is July 5th, will be the first Sunday in July, and as such, we will be observing communion. Uh, as we've done, uh, we are offering, again, the uh, prepackaged cups. Uh, if you would like some of those, let myself or Angie Chase know uh, how many you would like and uh, how you would prefer us to get them to you. Uh, you also may uh, uh, procure your own bread or something that you can break and eat, as well as juice or something that can be poured and drank uh, during that time for communion. Uh, also, I want to remind everyone that the In the Meantime devotionals are continuing. Uh, just last week, uh, we took a look at uh, General Assembly, uh, what it is, how it meets, how it works, what some of the issues our larger denomination is wrestling with this year. Uh, this coming week, uh, we'll uh, recap that as well as some other uh, important news and information, um, especially uh, be sure to pay attention in the coming days and weeks as we move into phase four of the Re Restore Illinois plan, uh, which will allow us to uh, hopefully in the not too distant future uh, begin to make plans for a return to live in-person worship. Do know, even when we make those uh, make that transition back to live worship, we will continue with uh, streaming and recorded option of worship as well, uh, especially for those of you that won't feel that the time is quite ready or quite safe. And lastly, for some of our younger members, I uh, want to make you aware, I think some information may have already been shared on the Facebook page, but we'll look to share more uh, about a online virtual Camp Carew option, uh, completely free parents, online uh, Camp Carew option, as well as uh, perhaps a, even an online vacation Bible school. So we have more details to share about that. We'll make sure we share them on our webpage. Uh, as well as during announcements and through our Facebook page and email. But at this time, let us enter into our time of worship by turning, as we always do in these moments, to God in prayer. Let us pray. You show up, Jesus, in the most unlikely places. Give us patience to wait and watch when we cannot sense your presence so that we may be ready to greet you where we are. Amen. Please join me in our call to worship. We will sing of your steadfast love, O Lord, and proclaim your faithfulness to all generations. Your steadfast love endures forever. Your faithfulness is as high as the heavens. Happy are those who sing your praise and extol your righteousness all the day. Please join in singing our gathering hymn, As the Deer. As the deer panted for the water so my soul longeth after thee.
into our time of confession. Let us confess our sins to God, whose loving kindness endures forever. O oh Lord, you taught us to love you and our neighbor, but we have not lived in right relationship or walked in the light of your love. Forgive us for the wrongs we have done. We know that the wages of sin is death. Yet we trust in your gift of forgiveness, which is freedom and life in Christ. Amen. Sisters and brothers, your sins are forgiven by the mercy of Jesus. Be at peace, for you have been freed from sin, that you may serve with righteousness to the glory and praise of God. Now is the time for the children, uh, the young or just the young at heart, uh, to come on down, virtually speaking, for our time with the children. And as we do, I'm going to step to the side here and ask you to look at uh, what is behind me there. Uh, this banner uh, is hung in our sanctuary many weeks. Uh, you've probably seen it many, 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 many times. It's uh, 
actually almost kind of looks like a quilt. There's lots of different colors, lots of different pieces, but you know, when we look at this image, uh, even though many of the pieces are very different, different colors, different sizes, different shapes, we're able to actually see another shape in all of that, aren't we? We, we, we can see the shape of the cross, right? Uh, that there is a pattern to this banner back here. You know, when God created people, when, when God made human beings, uh, God blessed us in so many different ways. And one of those ways is with the brain that we all have. Human brains are fascinating. In fact, there is so much about the human brain that uh, we still, for all the research, all the study, we still just don't know uh, a whole lot about the brain. Uh, but one of the things we know, one of the ways that uh, our brain helps us is that uh, people are very gifted, uh, very, very blessed to be able to discern patterns, um, to notice things. Um, to perceive and order uh, to some things that on the surface uh, may look uh, different or odd or like they have nothing to do together. But like our banner back here, uh, we can see those patterns are all pointing us to that cross. Well, it's not just patterns we can observe with our eyes, our, our brains can also help us understand patterns um, even in our relationships with other people. Uh, it's one of actually the ways that we learn. Um, think about multiplication. If any of you have learned your multiplication tables, uh, it's, it's pretty simple. You actually memorize them, but there is a consistent pattern that is always the same no matter what when you multiply certain numbers. And if you had, understand the basics of multiplication with small numbers, you can use those patterns to multiply incredibly large numbers. It may take more time to do it, but there's a way to do it because there's a pattern, there's an order, there's a logic behind all of it. It's the same thing with our relationships with other people. We know that our moms and dads and grandparents and aunts and uncles and siblings and friends, we know they like us or that they love us because they act in certain ways over and over and over and over again. Think about a friend you might have that might have difficulty telling the truth. Maybe they tell the truth every now and then, but they lie and lie and lie and lie. When you recognize that pattern, are you likely to trust such a friend with a big secret? Probably not, because we've understood the pattern is they're not really a trustworthy person or somebody who shares with us often. When we need help or we need something, maybe they're someone we're likely to turn to because we've learned again and again and again over time and over experience that this is somebody who can help and somebody who would share with us. God is the same way. The book of Psalms is 150 chapters long and each one of them can be thought of as a type of prayer. Uh, these are old and ancient prayers, but they are words that remind us of ancient people's experience of God. And what we read in the Psalms over and over and over again is no matter how bad things get, no matter how difficult things are, or no matter how good and great things are, the one thing we are always promised and the one thing we can always count and hope on is that God will always be with us, God will always love us, and God will always show us a way. It's another pattern that God has blessed us with our brains to be able to. To recognize. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this time together today, but uh, before we go and continue on with our service, will you pray with me? Good, let us pray. Dear God, thank you for the many blessings that you give us, especially the blessing of being able to recognize patterns that we see, 
that we hear and that we can understand. Help us to recognize your pattern of love and care for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks for coming down. Our reading today is from the book of Psalms, Psalm number 13. Listen now for God's word. How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I take counsel in my soul and have sorrow in my heart all the day? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? Consider and answer me, O Lord, my God. Light up my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death, lest my enemy say, I have prevailed over him, lest my foes rejoice because I am shaken. But I have trusted in your steadfast love. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Several weeks ago, I read an account of a man in Vermont who entered into a solitary retreat in the woods in that state back in February. After 70 days by himself with no connection to the outside world, he emerged and reached out to the world on social media saying, how are things going? I'm sure maybe you did a little bit of math or maybe looked at a calendar and realized that he retreated from the world before the COVID-19 pandemic changed almost every facet of life for us. He retreated before our stock market went up and down and all around in ways that even the craziest roller coaster could not mimic. He retreated before our nation and even our world has seen and experienced and continues to experience civil upheaval, the likes of which we've not seen for a generation or more. Maybe you're also thinking of what happened, what has changed, what has been lost, what is different for you in these past three months. If not, take a moment now and think. Even if you need to pause the recording just to think about all of those things. Think about everything that has changed in your life. Change is never easy. It's rarely, if ever, pleasant. Even if change is for the better, it always produces anxiety and fear and worry. Sure, things may be better, but what if it's not? There's comfort in knowing what is going to come next. Even if we're not really thrilled with our present reality, there's a comfort that comes from familiarity, from knowing what is about to take place. It's a comfort that has been bracingly absent in our life since March 15th, maybe even longer. As the hard work of flattening the curve, even now, in parts of our country seeing spikes, it seems almost like it's careening off the rails. We wonder what's happening there, even as our part of the world moves into a new phase of Restore Illinois and ponders what reopening looks like, we know the only certainty is that everything, everything is uncertain, right? Our comfort, therefore, should never be in our circumstances. No matter how great they may be, they are temporary and fleeting. Like our feelings, emotions, and thoughts, our circumstances can and will change, for good and sometimes for ill. What never changes, though, what never fails, what we can base our comfort and our hope in life on, even our future, is God's love. We can base 
all of those things, on God's patience with us, even when we don't deserve it. We can base it on God's presence with us. We can even base it on God's own nature, God's loving kindness. We've been this psalmist before, the one who wrote the words of Psalm 13. When we think that the messages of the past few weeks, as well as for today and for next week, are on the theme of God overcoming, this psalm, Psalm 13, starts a bit ominous, doesn't it? How long? How long? Four times we hear that phrase. How long? How long will you forget? How long will you hide your face? How long will I carry sorrow in my heart? How long will my enemy triumph over me? Ouch. This person is hurting. Deeply hurting. This person is scared. This person is uncertain. This person is us. We've been here, every one of us. We've been here before. If we're not there now, we know something will happen at some point that brings us there. And just as we come out of it, we know we'll be there again. That is our experience in life. We've been here before. But do you hear where it goes next in verse 3? Those three imperatives, those three commands, the demands that are made of God. Consider me. Answer me. Light up my eyes. This is not a timid prayer. This is not like, oh, sir, can I please have some more? No, this is not that kind of request. This is a demand. This is a full-throated, full-on demand that will not be denied. This must be listened to. When's the last time you spoke to God like that? What's important here is the realization that God wants us in all times and always, and God wants all of us. Not all of us as in us plural together, but all of us as completely and totally us. God even wants our hurt, our anger, our confusion, our hopelessness, our frustrations, our demands. God wants all of us. More than this, Psalm 13 is a lament psalm. The lament is the genre of that appears more often than any other in the psalm. Psalm 13, along with 66 other psalms, fall into this category far more than any other type of psalm there is. And this is the hallmark that they all share, that we pour out in them when we hear them, poured out pain and anguish and everything. Nothing is held back. But this is not simply a venting of emotion, a letting out, a shouting it out sort of thing. Did you hear from the very get-go how God is addressed in this psalm? O Lord, it says in verse 1. Verse 3 becomes, O Lord, my God. By the time we get to verse 6, the final verse, the shouting has turned to singing. I will sing to the Lord, it says. No, A lament is not some cathartic release of pent-up negativity. A lament is a full-on, no-holds-barred encounter with the God we are in ever-present relationship with. Scholar Daniel Estes notes that all laments begin by imploring God because they are rooted, after all, in faith. They are implicit statements of faith because of relationship. Psalms, he goes on to say, speak most often to God, not about God. We dare to speak to God because we dare to be in relationship with God. For honest with ourselves, these past months, all this change, all of the changes that are yet to come, whatever they are, forget it all. We are over change. We are on change overload. 
But what the psalmist reminds us of here, importantly and critically, this day and all days, even though change is a given, even though change will happen, even though it will hurt and not be pleasant, it's not the end of the story. There is more. Rather than a stoic, accept it, embrace it, move on, which is a statement one of my closest friends says often, this psalm reminds us we are blessed and we are not alone. Did you hear verses 5 and 6? Another feature of laments is no matter how terrible they start out, no matter how hard to hear they are at the beginning, that hardship is often given and named in very general terms. It allows us to see our own present struggles. We are able to appropriate them, to put our own lives and situations into those same feelings. It's how we know we've been there before. But we also come to the but that is present in all laments. We find it in verse five, because there is always a but, always a hinge, always a turning point that changes our vision what we see, what we imagine could be possible. It changes our attitude. Because we are in relationship with a living and present and active God, we have our experience of God to draw upon, of the times that God shows up, the times that God is there, the times when no one else can be found, but God is there. Now make no mistake, God's presence may not solve the issue. Things may not work out the way we had hoped. That's never been the promise of faith. What is promised is God's presence, God's steadfast love, the reality that God has dealt bountifully, far more bountifully than we've ever deserved with all of us. There is no I. That's the name of this sermon. It reflects the reality of Psalm 13, that we are never alone, no matter how dark it seems. God is with us. We are never alone. We are always with God. We are always caught in the grip of God's grace. We are experiencing, if we have but eyes to see and ears to hear, the mercy upon mercy of our God. So what does all of this come to? What does all of this have to do with today, with where we go with these words? How do they inform our next steps? A great deal, I believe. I don't need to tell you that our church has experienced unbelievable changes since March 15th, which is the last day we met in this space together. More has changed since then in probably the last 30 years of this church. But with all those things that have changed, and change keeps it coming, there is another significant change coming as well. As I shared with the session the other night, and as a letter that may even yet still be on its way to all of you, will share with you, a change in my life and a change in the life of our congregation is that I will be stepping down as pastor of First Presbyterian Church, effective Sunday, August 16th, 2020. That's a little under two months from now. Suffice to say that God has led me to the point where I have come to recognize and understand that the, God, that the work that God has called me to do here in Taylorville has been accomplished and is complete inasmuch as our work for God is ever complete. More than that, suffice to say, God, I believe, has called me elsewhere, back to more training and education of all things. I've been telling all of you for the past six years that I really am a nerd at heart, right? More details are present in the letter. More details will be shared in one of the daily devotionals this coming week. More will definitely be shared, as I do hope to meet with as many of you as possible between now and August 16th, where we can share uh, what was great, what was not so great, where we can say our goodbyes and appreciations, but uh, can also share uh, about where things are going in the future. 
But for now, whether this news gladdens you, and maybe for a few of you it does, or whether this news saddens you, or whether this news leaves you, you're not quite sure how you feel. The reality is, ministers come and ministers go. It's what we do. Ministers, no matter how great or how terrible they are, they are not the church. This is not my church. It does not belong to me. You, each and every one of you, are the church. We ministers, we minister best when we help the church be who God calls it to be. Together, the people of God. Remember that mission statement? This church, this congregation, has made tremendous growth in seeking and following the lead of God in my time here. Yet, as with all things, this church isn't done. There's more room to go. There's more journey to be had. What is going to change, though, is that I will not be journeying with you past August 16th. In a way, our work for God, our ministry, and all of us who claim faith in Jesus, we are called the ministry. It is never complete. And it is never ours alone. We are called into community for a reason, after all. Also know that while this is a significant change in the, my life, the life of my family, and yes, the life of this congregation, and perhaps even this community, God's love, God's gift of faith to all of us, the presence that God gives and gives and gives even more to us each and every day, that is constant and with us always, and that will never change, not even though our relationship changes. Because it will. Our relationship will change in a few weeks. I will no longer be your pastor, Although for the past six years or for however long we have been connected in that relationship, it has been an incredible, an incredible deep honor to be called your pastor, to share this common life together with you. But all that we've built together, the connections we've forged, who we have been together, namely again, the people of God, We've been together gods. Remember that possession, not plural. None of this will change. Know also that your session and your presbytery are already at work, rising and ready to meet this challenge. There is much work to do and much work that will be done, but they will not do it alone. You will not do it alone. We will not do it alone. Rather, we will do it in the light, in the love, and in the presence of God with us. Even now, I know, beyond all doubt, that God is leading another. One who will come and follow me. One who will come to the foundation that has been laid in this church, not this building, but in this collective life that is the Presbyterian Church. For over 160 years, that foundation has been made. It's not only old, it is strong. It is one that has been built over time by many people who are no longer with us, but has been built in so many ways over so many years by so many of you. It will continue to be built by you and by others. God is not done here, and neither is your work for God. As the people of God, you will always have more to do. But because there is no I and we, all of us know, don't we, that we are in good hands. Amen? Amen. As we come to our time of the prayers of the people, a few names and situations to keep in mind in your own prayers. And also remember, we lift up and name our own needs and concerns, as well as our joys and blessings in this time. But do remember to keep Cameron Harmon and his family in your prayers. 
Uh, Cameron has received news of the next step and next surgery he will face later this summer, which will involve, unfortunately, the full removal of his left lung. Although this is a very invasive procedure, uh, it is believed this is the best course of action. We pray for Cameron, his family, and his care team, and we especially pray that this step will be successful in eliminating cancer from his body. We also continue to pray for Brendan Lee, the stepfather of Bryce Marsalia, who's not only recovering from a heart attack earlier in the week, but from triple bypass surgery and a valve replacement that took place as a result. We give thanks for a successful procedure, but also pray that Brendan will continue to heal and recover. We also continue to lift Helen Davis, Ray McKinney, and Ruth Ball in prayer as they recover from illness and surgery as well. We also pray for the commissioners and for the work done at the 224th General Assembly, which has just concluded uh, doing the work of our national level church. For all these things, as well as those things on our hearts and minds, let us carry them all to God in prayer. We pray for the health and welfare of all nations. We extol your righteousness forever. and By your favor, our horn is filled. We pray for the strength and vitality of your church. We exalt your name, O God, and sing of your righteousness. We pray for all who suffer from sickness, hardship, or danger. For you are the glory of our strength shield in times of adversity. We pray for the goodness and well-being of your creation. Your steadfast love is declared forever. Your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. We remember those who make their procession home to you this day. May they all live eternally in the light of your countenance. Unite us in one unending song of praise to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Hear us now as we pray together as Jesus leads us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Friends, as we move into our time of giving, we remind you that online giving is indeed an option. Just stop by our church webpage and you can follow the links for online giving. We also will continue, of course, to accept mail donations as well as those that are dropped through the mail slot at the church building. We continue to give thanks for your exceptional and gracious support during these unprecedented times. But now as we prepare to come and give our all to God, we know that God gave the only begotten Son so that we may have eternal life through him. As a response, let us offer our thanksgiving with the gifts of our lives as we give to God our tithes and offerings. Let us give and give generously. Please join me in our prayer of dedication. Faithful God, we give you thanks that you have entrusted us with the gift of hospitality and generosity, and that you have set us free to be generous givers of the gifts you so freely give to us. May our offerings this day draw us closer to you as we share with others for righteousness sake. Amen. Please join in singing our sending hymn, Now Thank We All Our God.
Friends, as our time together draws to a close, hear these final words of benediction and charge. May the one who creates, redeems, and sustains you from everlasting to everlasting grant you the grace of peace, holiness, and eternal life. Now, brothers and sisters, you have been given the spirit of freedom and saved for the sake of God's love. Freely share that love in this world, knowing that the reward, the reward of right relationship is holiness and life eternal. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Alleluia. Amen.